وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور Pain makes you fall Remember just remember Allah sees it all الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استن بسنته إلى يوم الدين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. We'd like to welcome you dear viewers again to our program in the names of Allah. This program which was designed to help the believers understand Allah better because this is the only route by which we can understand Allah by what he has revealed of himself to us his names mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah this is a source of knowledge for us to better understand our Lord we study these names in order to find out more about Allah so that when we worship Him, our worship would be fulfilling what it is that He wants from us for our own benefit, because obviously Allah doesn't need anything from us. But through His names, He is informing us about Himself so that we can worship Him we can live lives of worship, as we said earlier, that the whole life of a believer should be a life of worship. As Allah gave the basic motto of the believer in the Quran, saying, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Indeed, say, indeed, my prayers my sacrifices, my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. That's the whole life dedicated to Allah. For that to happen, it must happen with guidance. Because how does a person know how to dedicate his life to Allah? If it's left up to us to come up with ideas from our own heads, we can come up with all kinds of things appropriate and inappropriate. So Allah gave us sources of knowledge in order to know how to worship Him. And His names is one of those basic sources found in the revelation of the Quran and the revelation of the Sunnah. So we have taken the basic approach outlined in another verse of the Qur'an in which Allah said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا Indeed, all of the most beautiful and excellent names belong to Allah. So call on Him with them. Worship Him through them. So following that principle, we have been working our way through the various names of Allah. In this segment, we have reached name number 19. We're adding it to number 20 and 21. Al-Ghafir, the forgiver of sins. Al-Ghaffar, the oft-forgiving. 
and Al Ghafur, the forgiving. All of these names, all of these names reflect an element of Allah's accepting repentance or even blotting out sins without repentance based on other acts that a person may do which are good as Allah said in the Quran elsewhere in al hasanat yudhibna sayat that righteous deeds erase evil deeds so this is a part of Allah's quality of being the oft forgiving so these uh, names numbers 19 20 and 21 are the ones we're looking at in this segment we began our whole series with the greatest name of Allah that was Allah itself and we brought evidences to support why we felt that that was the greatest name of Allah other opinions exist but the overwhelming evidence supports Allah as the greatest name of our Creator now we pointed out that worshipping Allah with His names or through His names had to be done in accordance with the way that the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, did. Because Islam was revealed to him. He is the one who conveyed Islam to the generations to come, to reach us. He best knew how to worship Allah through his names. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the ways by which we would remember Allah was not to take his name Allah and keep repeating it over and over and over again. This was not the way. That is something which people invented. People use it try to find justifications for it, but the bottom line is that Prophet Muhammad didn't do it, nor did his companions. So we know that this practice of repeating Allah's name, Allah, 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 this practice is falsehood. It's misguidance. It doesn't bring us closer to Allah. It takes us further away from Allah. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, "Ma taraktu shay'an yuqarribukum ila Allah illa wa amartukum bi." I left nothing which would bring you closer to Allah without telling you to do it, and that wasn't among the things that he told us to do. So, dear brother and sister, brothers and sisters, watching this program, I hope that this point is clear. The topic of this segment, we said, was the 19th, 20th, and 21st name. Al-Ghafir, mentioned only one time in the Qur'an. And that is in Surah Ghafir, by the same name. In the third verse, Allah says there, غَافِرُ الذَّنْبِ وَقَابِلُ التَّوْبِ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ the forgiver of sin, acceptor of repentance, the severe in punishment. Al-Ghaffar is mentioned five times in the Quran. Among them, in Surah Nuh, verse 10, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا I said, ask forgiveness from your Lord. Indeed, he is oft forgiving. And Al-Ghafur, this is the most frequently mentioned of these three names related to forgiveness. It is mentioned 91 times in the Quran. Among them in Surah Ashura, or Surah Ashura, verse 5, Ala inna Allah Indeed, only Allah is the forgiving, the most merciful. Now, 
the origin of the names al ghafir al ghaffar al ghafur these names came from a root ghafr ghafr which means covering and hiding relative to allah these divine names mean that the one who covers sins this is allah's quality he is the one who can cover sins blot out sins this is that foundation for forgiveness forgiving of sins through blotting them out in distinction ibn al arabi trying to distinguish between the names al ghafir al ghaffar and al ghafur he said that al ghafir is the one who covers sins in this world al ghafur meant covering sins in the hereafter and al ghaffar meant covering sins from the sight of the lost creatures this is uh sounds nice but really linguistically speaking we don't have any clear evidence to establish these different uh interpretations the basic principle here is that they all relate back to ghafr ghafr which means hiding or covering blotting out and that relative to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it means the one who removes sins we call it forgiving now the significance of this particular uh, attribute found in the name al ghafir as well as the name al ghaffar and the name al ghafur is that allah's quality and names are manifest through human sin through human sin some people ask why did allah create satan when he knew that he was going to cause adam to eat from the tree the point is that though the act of satan was evil and adam's acceptance of satan's suggestions was wrong and his eating of the tree from the tree the forbidden tree was sin at the same time that act after doing it Adam turned back to Allah and sought repentance. In turning back to Allah and seeking repentance, Adam did a great act of worship. Seeking repentance from sin because it is the nature of human beings to sin. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kullu bani Adam khata." all of adam's descendants constantly make errors with that thought we're going to take a break and we'll be coming back from the break to look further into this concept of human sin and god's forgiveness assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh when you are weak and the road seems long remember just remember seek strength from the strong assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to perspectives i'm your host musa maguire there are 11 million you know not 1 million not 3 million 11 million people their children under 5 that die every year i mean it's mind boggling and nobody cares it is an action Uh, and the movement from the people's side you cannot press a button and say well stop at this point well they have been hurt it and that is a reaction we can go to those big countries and we tell them you are producing this tv or this machine and this small part of it i can make it better smaller and less expensive so while islam would allow in vitro fertilization outside the uterus from Uh, the uh, emerit man and woman and then implanted in the uterus of this woman when you are weak and the road seems long remember just 
Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. We welcome you back dear viewers from the break to our program in the names of Allah. And in this segment we're looking at three names all related to forgiveness. Al-Ghafir, Al-Ghaffar and Al-Ghafoor. All of them addressing the quality of Allah to forgive sins of His creatures when they turn to Him in repentance or they do acts which leads Him through His pleasure to forgive them other sins. We spoke earlier about a woman from the Israelites who came to a well, she was a prostitute, came to a well, saw a dog dying of thirst, unable to get into the well to get water from the well. So she tied her scarf to her shoe, climbed partly into the well, put her shoe into the water, bring it out, brought it out, and fed the dog. On feeding the dog, Allah pleased with this merciful act on her part, forgave her of her sins. That is Al-Ghaffar, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Ghafir. So we were talking about this issue of sin, human beings committing sin, and Allah forgiving them. And we spoke about why Allah created Satan, knowing that he would tempt Adam and lead Adam into sin. What we pointed out here was that when Adam sinned, he then turned back to Allah and sought forgiveness. And for that, Allah forgave him of his sin. As the Prophet ﷺ said, أَتَّائِبُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَ One who repents from sin is like one without sin. So this act of repentance is a major act of worship. And this was the good, the great good, that would come out of Satan's act of tempting Adam. So Allah created Satan, knowing what he was going to do, because of this greater good that would come from that act. And also, uh, we have a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, narrated by Abu Ayyub and Abu Huraira. They said that the Prophet ﷺ had said, If you did not commit sins, Allah would sweep you out of existence and replace you with another people who would commit sins, ask Allah's forgiveness, and He would forgive them. If we didn't commit sins, Allah would have removed us from existence and replaced us with people who would sin, ask Allah's forgiveness, and He would forgive them. So, in the sin that a human being commits, when he turns back to Allah, seeking Allah's forgiveness, Allah's attribute of being the oft-forgiving is manifest. So this is the great good that comes from that evil root. And this is why Allah created us, human beings, knowing full well that we would disobey Allah, that we would commit sins. In another narration, from Anas ibn Malik, he related that the Prophet ﷺ had said, Allah is more delighted with the repentance of his servant than one who suddenly finds his camel laden with supplies after losing it in a barren land. As a person would be so much in joy and happiness after losing their camel at the point of death, dying of starvation, and all of a sudden the camel reappears. 
how happy we would be. Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is more happy with the servant who turns to him in repentance. So this is the great value of repentance with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, when we look at the impact of these names, Al-Ghaffar, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Ghafir, Allah the oft forgiving, it should keep hope alive in the heart of the believer. Keep hope alive that he or she would be forgiven of their sins. Because Allah is the oft forgiving. So, the believer doesn't fall into a state of uh, distress and give up hope and fall into more sin as a result of having lost all hope. This names, these names, reminds the believer when he worships Allah, reflects on them, reminds the believer that Allah will forgive. However, there are conditions. Some people take this understanding of Allah, Allah's name, Al-Ghafoor. They've taken it and have gone to extremes. So when they commit sins, and they're advised, brother, sister, this is not good. It's haram. Don't do it. They say, Allah ghafoor or rahim That becomes the answer. Allah is all forgiving and He's merciful. But the bottom line is that His mercy and His forgivingness, is it something arbitrary? You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is believe that He is forgiving and merciful and you're forgiven, that doesn't make sense. That's illogical. That's foolish. No. There has to be effort on the part of Allah's servant for him to deserve and to receive by the grace of Allah, Allah's forgiveness. So, let us not fool ourselves into thinking that without any effort on our part, we will receive Allah's forgiveness. No. Forgiveness has conditions. There are clear conditions which were set by the Prophet wasallam, set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. They're there. There are conditions. The first of the conditions is one which the Prophet wasallam said in a hadith which was narrated by Ibn Ma'qil, he quoted the Prophet ﷺ as saying, An nadamu tawbatun. An nadamu tawbatun. Remorse is repentance. In that statement, the Prophet ﷺ laid the foundation for true repentance. Remorse feeling bad about what one has done. That is a condition for one's repentance to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If one commits a sin and still enjoys the memory of that sin, they don't feel bad in any way within themselves about the sin. They just know it's a sin. People tell them it's a sin. They know they shouldn't do it because maybe they studied it or their parents told them or society tells them. It's not good, but in their hearts they love it. And they turn to Allah and say, Astaghfirullah. Forgive me, O Allah. Will Allah forgive them? No. Because this primary condition, which Allah made equivalent to repentance, is missing. Remorse. It's like when Prophet ﷺ said, Al Hajju Arafa. Hajj is Arafa. Well, it doesn't actually mean Hajj is Arafa. It means that without Arafa, there is no Hajj. If you miss Arafa, there is no Hajj. If you miss Mina, 
before Arafah, your Hajj is still there. There are things that you can miss from Hajj and Hajj is still there. But if you miss Arafah, no Hajj. Because Arafah is the essence of Hajj. The plane of Arafah, everything is moving towards that point. Where we stand and spend half the day in worship of Allah, in prayer. In the plane of Arafah. So in the same way as Hajj is invalid if Arafah is missing, similarly, Tawbah is invalid if Nadam is missing. And Nadama, remorse, sadness, feeling bad about what one has done, if that is missing, then there is no repentance. It's only a ritual we're going through, words we are mouthing, but it has no impact. And as such, Allah will not forgive us. So, as I said, Alhamdulillah, knowledge of the names shows us, reminds us of this great forgiving quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it should keep hope alive in the heart of the believer. But it is not an idle hope. An aimless hope. A hope which is not connected to some real practical acts which by the grace of Allah bring the forgiveness of Allah. It becomes deserved by Allah's grace. Without that, then repentance is a meaningless ritual. That, with that point, uh, dear viewers, we're going to come to an end of the program. We'll close it and we hope to see you in our coming program where we'll finish off our discussion on Allah's oft-forgiving nature as expressed in His names Al-Ghafir, Al-Ghaffar, and al ghafur With that, I bid you all farewell. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength.